Bum, bum. Hey everybody, Last Outrider here with a long-awaited and anticipated opinion video of what do I think about 40k 8th edition. And I haven't been lazy. I, I know I could have been one of those people out there who rushed out a video right away telling everybody what they thought about a game that they maybe played only once or even less, only read the book and haven't even played anything. I think you know who those people are. I'm not like that. So I actually like to think about my opinions before I form them. And I believe, I even now, I can just say I've become comfortable enough to make a brief video saying what I think about my personal experience with 8th edition so far. If I have to say it in short, well, here's what happened. I'm reading through the book, just reading through it literally from front to back. I, I didn't really skip in between. I did a little skipping to see because they mentioned some new armies, but uh, mostly I started at the beginning and I just started reading and I just read to the end, which was a little sad because some of the, 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 the most, the greatest epiphany I got from the book was like one of the last things that I was reading in it. Um, I like the idea that, that battle for the concept of armies is much, much, much more relaxed in that you can mix and match units as opposed to having these fixed codexes. That's great. If I could sum everything up in in a sentence, I would say 8th edition plays like a mixture between Rogue Trader and 2nd edition. It really does. When I started building my armies, I realized I was back in the... Well, it felt familiar to me because it felt like I had originally felt when I started playing 40k, really. Um, your, your armies, because they have so many options in the units that you can mix together now, really become more of an expression of your personality and what you're trying to build in an army than it does in 7th edition and 5th edition and 6th edition where you pick up a codex and this is your army. It's everything in this book. There's, there, there's, there's nothing out of it. There's no changing it, really. You, now, the first thing I tried to do is figure out how to throw Sisters of Silence into my Sisters of Battle army. Uh, simply because I like Sisters of Silence. And I said, there's got to be a way of making this work. I don't care. I just want to create the narrative where I put these two together. Uh, and, and, you know, the Astra Telepathica, something like that uh, army. I mean, now you've gotten to the point where they don't need these fully self-contained codexes to have an army list. They just need to create a unit and say who they can work with. And if you go with Unchained, you don't even need to do that. Just Battleforged. Um, so I just had tons of fun putting together all these crazy types of armies, trying them out, making mistakes, uh, just plain stupid mistakes, it's okay because virtually everybody I was playing with was making stupid mistakes too, which brought up another interesting point, which I'll talk in another video when I talk about this, uh, uh, the, the new campaign, the, the Battle for Kanor. Um, it comes out at the same time that these new rules do. So I'm thinking that if they're really counting points for this campaign, how many battles will just be totally foobar, but played by people who just screwed up 8th edition rules so badly? That's got to play into the, into the end results of the campaign. Anyways, back to 8th edition. 
Um, still love my fortifications. Still love my Tyranids. Still love my sisters. Uh, they're augmented now because, you know, I can take Astra Telepathica and throw it into the sisters' army. And, you know, just make them all female figures and still say it's a sister's army and it doesn't break anything. I can take my sisters of silence or sister and throw them in there and wrap whatever narrative I want around my army list. You see what I mean? I mean, I can call them, this is sisters of silence and this is uh, Astra Telepathica, or I could just say that they're suborders of of the Adepta Sororitas, you know, uh, things like that, which made it a lot more fun. And I haven't been able to do that since Rogue Trader slash second edition. The days when you built really your band of elite heroes and, and fought each other. What else? Um, the most enjoyable part of reading the Codex, uh, I mean the new rules, came at the end by happenstance. I was, you know, first I was blown away by all the new changes. The armor modification, brilliant, again, straight out of the Rogue Trader days, you know, uh, it, it, it's just brilliant. I love that. Uh, wounds coming back in where we got rid of armor values. Just everything has, has wounds. That's just brilliant as well. But none of that mattered. The thing just brought this smile to my face. I was just reading it. And I'm like, what? It's like they wrote this for me. They wrote this for me. Somebody loves me. What am I talking about? Flamers. Yes, obviously. I'm a sisters player. So you can only imagine. Just going through the appendixes, happen to flip through the, oh, what they do with flamers? You know, not the first thing that came into my mind as I flipped through the eighth edition was to think of what do they do with flamers? But then I read that and first it didn't even make sense. It didn't even make sense to me. I'm looking at it as like flamer, eight inches, auto hit, uh, D6 wounds. Okay. What, what, what does that mean? Where, where's the template? It just says eight inches. Does, uh, and then I was like angry for a second. Like, what are you saying? A flamer is now a single, a single enemy. It only hits one unit. No, it, it hits everybody in eight inches. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. Really? It does. No, 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 they did it. No way. Are you serious? Yes. Really serious. So you're saying. My Seraphim squad, which has two hand flamers in it, they can just bounce in and they will auto hit everybody within range for D6 wounds? Yes. Really? Yes. And my war hymns and everything like that? Yes. Okay, I just, I gotta, I gotta go kill somebody right now. Anybody, anybody, anybody have figures? Just throw it on the table. I just need to try this. I just, I need to set somebody on fire. And it's just incredible. And then, you know, it just got better. The missile launcher, that was the next thing that I noticed using the Fortress of Redemption. Um, and, and finally, I think the thing that really was nostalgic is bringing back the Laz Cannon. And I don't know if people remember this, but the Laz Cannon was like the most feared weapon in the game for second edition. It was it was just terrifying. And now it just went off of its way to be just a standard weapon, but now it's back. Which is which is which is really, really cool as well. Sorry about that. I guess somebody's... 
I don't know what they're doing. Maybe weed whacking. Um, but yeah, from that standpoint, it's 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 just an incredible, an incredible. It brings so much narrative back to the game, uh, and the the reason why I throw the rogue trader days back into this is because you can still do the unchained armies. You can still just throw any model you want into the game and just play with it uh, as a non-battleforged army. And it, in that case, you really are back to the days of Rogue Trader when you can do anything you want and play. Uh, so that's, I, I think, it, it's as if Games Workshop just retconned, you know, the last 20 years of 40K and went back to the beginning, which which is great, which is kind of really, if you think about it, what they had to do. You, you really had two choices. Either you're going you're gonna to throw everything out and restart with a completely new game system which will make people go insane or you can throw everything out all the way back to day one of the game which will just make a lot of people mad except for those who've been around since day one which will then remember that which we do and like i've seen on the internet there are still people hating out there on the game but the, that was going to happen no matter what. I like it. I, I, I think it's a huge thumbs up. I think uh, you, you don't need a game like Inquisitor anymore, which had the larger figures, you know, for role-playing type battles. Now you can use this. Now you can go straight into a Dark Heresy campaign and then just whip out the 40K 8th edition rules and throw together anything you want. and. Uh, it, 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 overall, I'm just extremely happy with it from that standpoint. And, of course, <clears throat> Flamers. I just I just need to say Flamers. In fact, it made me change my army list in, in one major way, is that I added the... Um, what's, the what's the name of it? The um, Admech Robot in, in, Incinerator... It's going to sound something like Incinerator. The big, huge, flaming robot guy. I don't have to worry because he's a robot, so it doesn't it doesn't mess with the gender lines of having an all-sister army. But, yeah, that, that one's definitely in there now. And the, and the missile launchers from... It's, it's, it's very, very nice. Uh, fortifications are still even better. Um, that's my thoughts on the game. I hope you enjoy it. And until next time, bye. <laughs>